Happy Saturday, 3D Printer people. This is John here again with GeoDroid John YouTube channel. I think I'm gonna change it to something interesting. Print to SD, what do you guys think? <laughs> Print to SD, because I live in San Diego. It's a beautiful day out here in San Diego, and I want to show off the Maker Mirror, Maker, not Maker Gear, oh my God, the Mosaic Palette Plus. Maker Gear used to make a, a machine called the Mosaic way back in the day. I'm going to show you some of the stuff I've been doing. I've kind of moved on from the Tron XY. Uh, it's just, I was going to get there. I could do that, but if it was my own machine, it would get there. It's just that the values aren't already set in, and I didn't want to tinker with it for too long. So I set up my CR10 here in my little back room. I got the Zone Star up there. Actually, quite a good machine now. And I've been tinkering, can you tell? So it all starts with this print right here. You make this first with through the software. And while I'm doing this, I'm actually going to set up for the first test, for the next part of my test. I'm calibrating this mosaic to work very well to do better purging. And you can see the evolution of purging on this yin and yang. So I'm playing with the settings there and I'm trying to get better purges. So right now it's actually making filament it takes it in it's taking in the white right now and then it's going to splice it it's got a magnet that senses and as that magnet um, gets pushed back by the Bowden tube it realizes how much more it needs so it makes more filament as it goes so this runs just in time to feed the actual motor for your machine and it goes down the tube. So it needs to know the value from here to there, how many millimeters or steps. And it also needs to know uh, the print value, how many millimeters this thing pushes that it thinks it's pushing versus what it actually pushes, which is what this sensor does. This is actually a stepper sensor. It actually tracks the amount of filament that goes into the machine. So, and it gives you a value. And you can play with those values and you can tweak them and input them into their Chroma software, which is what I have here. The prints will actually give you a return on how it thinks it's printing. It thinks it's, it's actually taking more filament here than it's supposed to, and it's taking less filament than it's supposed to here. So the goal here is to get it as close to 100 plus or minus one as possible. So I'm still tweaking that and you end up with a print so I'm adjusting it and adjusting it and adjusting it you can have multiple profiles on your machines you can change it out to another machine if you want there's a lot of different settings you can play around with this is the advanced stuff uh, it's not as plug-and-play as I thought it was but nothing really is so this should be okay uh, you can actually change you, have, you need to select your color, and this is very important because if you select it as a strong color, like I, I thought it meant if I wanted it to be stronger, I would select that. No, no, no. It's how overpowering the color is compared to the other ones you'd be using. So this is a weak color, so it's going to require more purging. But black is a strong color. It almost immediately purges. It, it overcomes white very, very easily. So I figured if I can get this to print out very good, I would be um, pretty much set for the rest of all the other colors. So let me show you why I decided to go down this testing path. So I printed out their first their first piece right here, and it gives you the print value. So Chroma sends a file to the SD card, and the SD card says, okay, this is how much filament should be used. Your machine prints this file, same exact file. Now there's a difference there, so you type that into the system and it gives you a print value, kind of like a percentage. And then um, I tried some other little things here. I tried to do some poker chips with red and white. This was a print failure. This was not a mosaic failure because some of the small pieces started coming off. Some of the little white pieces started coming out. And so I couldn't actually finish that print. I had to reset it and I was doing it on glass. So I ended up just putting the tape down. And then I tweaked the settings a little bit more. And let's see. 
I ended up making some pretty good poker chips. Earlier on, before I even got to that point, I tried to do the, the bearing gears. That actually, uh, it does rotate. It's just very stiff, but it does rotate. And um, you can see that there's some layer banding there. It shouldn't have done that. It should be all purple from one part down and then all red from the other part up. So I was having some calibration issues. And then I got it all tweaked up and I did these and it worked fine. And then I tried to do the parrot that you see on all their, their website, which is actually a lot more fun and interesting. It's almost like um, a puzzle to put together uh, how to make what colors I want where. It's very customizable and it did pretty good. You can see that it is solid. With other 3D printers, <coughs> They, ha they still have to purge, but they don't have to purge the full color, so they just have to prime, basically. But the parts tend to be apart from each other if the, if the offset value is not perfect with each other. This is the opposite. This is fine. The, the, the parts are very well merged together. There's no issue with adhesion of different STLs. The only problem is, is the purging, usually with the white. Uh, during this print though, it will have to clean itself out because you're only using one nozzle. A lot of wasted film in here. So it will purge every time it changes colors. It only does it once per layer, which is good. There's So since I've printed that, it actually failed in the tube. Inside the tube, when I saw it in the morning, it was actually broken in the tube and all the filament was already up to right there in my extruder. So it wasn't going to go any further. So I don't think it was a problem with the palette. Yeah, the purple filament I learned is, is a little bit more sensitive when I printed out these knobs. You need these gears on your CR10 or whatever machine you're using. But I realized that maybe the temperature I was using was a little bit high. So the purple filament's probably been around forever and it's just older. So I think that's why it didn't stick in the tube and it ended up breaking for some reason. You can customize your your splice settings between filaments, but um, I'm not blaming the mosaic, I'm not blaming the CR10, I just think it's a, a system failure for the filament. I'm blaming, blaming the filament. It does come with this handy little box. I do have a home-built one, but this one works just fine. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to configure all this. I know I want this kind of up and out of the way, but the way the tube works, it's gotta go from there straight through into something, and then you don't want too many sharp turns, which makes it very complicated. There's very uh, little waste once you get the hang of it. This is just the box of waste I've created since getting this. Um, there's a purge system where you can actually just use, it goes off bed, and it, I did this with a Tron, Tron XY, and creates like a little bird's nest. Actually, it was just a big, beautiful pile of fill in here, and I just kept twisting it until it turned into this little bird's nest. I think something could be done with this as far as filament recycling. So I think that might be a good method for filament recycling, but you do end up with a lot of this, but the good news is that you can just feed it right back into the mosaic, and it'll just make a bunch of splices for you. And you just have a bunch of extra filling that you can you can do on like demos. So it's a really cool setup. All right, so the first splice is done. And you literally just take this and you push it down. And you can see the filament has passed through the indicator. So sometimes when it's going through the tube, it gets a little stuck there. You just gotta give it a little push. I printed out this stand from somebody else on Thingiverse. I'll link that in the comments or the description after this is uploaded. And then now it's just right there. So I'm ready to load this in. And you can see that I have a little bit more space right there. So I'm gonna to try to do this one-handed. It's not gonna work, hang on. Let's see if I can stand you up. And we're in. Okay, so you gotta squeeze the trigger, you gotta push that part down, you gotta keep an eye on that, and then, then it goes inside your filament. Sometimes it gets stuck right there at the coupling, 
but then you just give this a twist and you can see that part physically move closer to the machine as you push it through. Now, here's something you have to do after every print is remove the filament immediately after the print because you know if you're going to continue using the mosaic, you're going to have to load this filament up every single time. So that is a, a drawback. You have to remove it. So what I end up doing is I just take it all the way to the side, set it there so it's more of like a purge area. And it tells me to continue making filament. So since it's at, at the extruder, I'm just going to twist my knob here. I'm going to twist that knob pretty good. You can see it go in. I'm getting some feedback here. I don't know why that would be happening. Getting some pressure. Turns out I might have had some filament left in the nozzle, so that's why it's taking a little extra. You want to warm up your machine first to operating temperatures. So probably had some filament left in the machine when I removed it. I thought I pulled it all out. So you got to purge it. And then um, once it's ready, it will tell you. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to get it to that point. Okay, so I've extruded enough filament manually, and now you can see the screen where it tells you exactly how much more to load. So this value needs to be tuned in before you can get good prints, and I'm manually extruding it. Theoretically, there should be nothing in your tube or in your extruder nozzle up to this point, but apparently something was left in mine. So you keep twisting, you keep pushing filament. You can do this with the control board if your machine supports it. But I highly recommend you just use the uh, manual method. So we're going to go ahead and push through this and I'll get back down to the part where it actually starts. Alright, so we're in the last 10 millimeters here. I want to show you something how, how well this actually detects it. I'm going to actually push it backward and you can see that the detector, this filament monitor, will actually detect how many millimeters you're moving forward or backward. So even with retraction turned on, which it does, it's an almost direct drive, retraction will be measured and it will keep you calibrated. The thing is, is that you want to keep this at the same, oh, I went too far, go back, and then it will give you a little chirp. So now I'm done, I'm going to pull away my little bird's nest, throw that in the trash, hit enter. Confirm loading is done. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for that little foghorn. Alright, so it's warmed up. Both SD cards need to be uh, matched up. This one's already got it on here. I'm going to print from SD. Man, that's actually a really cool name. So, let's go to test. I only have the one on there, and it's that's the name of the file on Thingiverse. Go ahead and click that. It should start right up. No problem. The print has started, and you always want to check that first layer height and make sure everything's going well. This one's pretty tuned in very well, so CR10, pretty good. It's going to do some skirts, and then we're going to get to the actual print. So the skirt's done. It's starting the actual print, the uh, yin or yang part. And uh, you know what? I'm going to cut the video here, but this has the, been the whole startup process once you have the files already set up. And this is about the amount of space it takes up. So you got the mosaic, you got the power box, you got the adapter, you need the little power wheel there, and a really well calibrated machine. This will not work on some janky machine. You need to be tuned in. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate your time and your, uh, your attention. If you want to make some comments, go for it. You know how YouTube works. Have a great day.